Today I'm showing you how you can build a simple backend using the Kotlin programming language and the KTOR framework. As a programmer, you might be interested in building your own mobile application. You can build mobile apps with Kotlin and Kotlin multi-platform, but your mobile app is going to need a backend. And that is where KTOR comes in, because this is a framework that allows you to build backends very, very easily and very quickly with minimal configuration. One of the downsides of using a language like Python for backend development, for example, is that you cannot build the frontend using Python, which is another reason why Kotlin and specifically KTOR is a really good option, because you can use the same language to build your backend as well as the front end, for example, in the case of an Android application or a shared Android and iOS application. And I really like this framework because it's extremely, extremely simple. Like whenever I use Django, for example, there's quite a bit of configuration and a lot of different files that can be very intimidating for beginners. This video is sponsored by JetBrains, the creator of KTOR and the Kotlin programming language. But I have used many of the tools before and I can tell you this is one of my favorite companies to work with in the programming industry. On this video specifically, I will simply show you how you can get started with KTOR. We will go through the basics of the Kotlin language so you can follow this video even if you're completely new to the language. And then what I want you to do is go to the documentation to the quick start guys and start expanding this to start adding more features to it. And you can use Kotlin to also then build a web client like a mobile application or something like that. Now you can build using Kotlin and KTOR using any code editor but I highly recommend that you use IntelliJ because it's built by JetBrains, one of my favorite companies in the entire tech space who are the same company that have developed the Kotlin language and the KTOR framework. So this is very optimized to make it very easy for KTOR and Kotlin development. Once you've got the IDE set up and open, you're just going to click on new project right here. Then from the left hand side over here, if you're using the IntelliJ Ultimate version for which you can get a free trial from the website, you should see this template over here called KTOR. So you're gonna click on that. So we're gonna click on KTOR. We're gonna give this a name. I'm just gonna call this to-do because what we're gonna build is a simple backend for a to-do application. Then you're gonna choose the location where you want to store this. You're gonna select group that I'm just gonna call com.to do. This is basically gonna be the name of the package for this application. And then we'll click on next and then you're going to see the option to add some plugins for this specific application the plugins that we're going to add are going to be routing so we'll search for routing and click on add as well as content negotiation which will add right there then we will simply click on create which will create our application and it will actually automatically go ahead and create all the files that you need to get started so to find the actual files for your code you're going to go to src main and then you're going to see two folders you're going to click on kotlin which is where most of your application logic is going to be hosted the first file we're going to open is application.kt. Now, this is actually the file that is, first of all, going to install the plugins that we just installed when starting the project. And this main function is what is actually going to start your KTOR server. Then you're going to see this file called routing.kt. Now, this is where we're going to define the routes for our KTOR server. What this basically means is that when you access this server in the URL and you go to the slash route, either on your browser or your web client, then the logic inside of these curly braces is what's going to be triggered. So we can actually test this right here. If we go back to application.kt, we click right here to run our application. It's gonna load up for a little bit to build this, and then it is going to start up our server so we can see how this works. It looks like there is an error over here. So what we need to do is import content negotiation right there. And what I like about IntelliJ is that whenever there's error, it's gonna highlight it to you and all you have to do is hover over it and then just usually click a button to fix it. So we'll try that again. And now we can see that our server is running. And on this last line here, it is saying that it is responding at this URL. So this is our local host URL where this server is now running. So if we go to this server, we can see that we are printing hello world. And why is that happening? Well, because what we did is we entered this slash route. So this code block right here now triggered. And what we're doing here is going call dot respond text, which basically just means respond back to the client with the text that is defined here, hello world. And if we change this, if we say this to hello moon, for example, and we rerun our server, now we see hello moon. So what we're gonna do now is build a server for a very simple to-do application to play around with a couple of the things we can do inside of KTOR. To get started, what we will do is go to this common.to do, right click, click on new package, and we'll call this models. And inside of this model, we will create again, new Kotlin class slash file, which we will call task.kt. 
And inside of here, we're creating what is called a model for a task, which is going to essentially define what these task objects that this application is going to use to define the tasks for your to-do list are going to look like. And so here, you're going to define fields for all the attributes they want each task to have. First of all, we're going to define a string field called ID that is going to have the type of string. And this is how you define variables inside of Kotlin. You use the keyboard bal, which refers to a value, so a variable specifically whose value cannot change the future. So this is defining an immutable variable. If you wanted to define variables whose value can change, you would use the keyboard bar like that. But when we use val, this is going to be immutable. And here with the colon string, we're defining that this has to be of type string. Instead of curly braces, we'll actually also change this so that it has this normal parentheses. And then we will have comma and we'll define val title, which is going to be the title of this task. That's also going to be of type string. We'll define val description to give like a longer description to it. Also a string. And finally, we will define completed, which is going to be a boolean that is going to denote whether this task is completed or not. And we're going to set it to false, which is basically going to mean that by default, it is going to be false if it is not defined already. And this description as well, we're actually going to make optional. And we do that by having string question mark, which essentially allows it to be also null. So if we don't define description, it's not going to give us an error. And we're also going to set it equal to null. So by default, it is null if it is not defined otherwise. And we'll also change this to be what is called serializable. And by just clicking enter, it automatically imports this as well, which is really useful. What this is basically just doing is that the instances of this class can be converted from one data format to another, for example, JSON, which is going to be useful because often, let's say you're using this backend in conjunction with an Android mobile application, often the data format that we want to use is going to be JSON. So this essentially just allows us to do that. And the last thing we will do is that rather than having this a class, we will actually call it what is called a data class. And you can read more in the documentation what this means. Basically, it's just a type of class that is more optimized for classes that are specifically designed to hold data, which is exactly the purpose that we're creating this class task for it essentially just creates some methods that are going to be useful automatically and once that is done we're going to go back to our folders and we're going to create a new package called service and inside of it we will create a file called task service.kt it's going to be of type file just like that and instead of here we will create an object task service which will house a bunch of functions that we will then use in our routing module in a second first we'll create a private val tasks which is going to be a private variable where the private means that it can basically not be accessed outside of this object right here initialize it as a mutable list of which is the way to define a list in Kotlin and inside of these little arrow braces, whatever they're called, we will give a task to define this. This has to be a list where the members are of type task and it's showing an error. So we just click import and it's going to import this task module that we just created. And then inside of this object, we will create a function with a keyword fun called get all tasks. We'll give it the type, which is going to be a list of tasks. So we will simply set this to be equal to tasks. So what this means is that when we call this function, what is it simply going to return is this tasks list right here. And the way we will use this is that we will go back to routing.kt and we'll define another get endpoint and we will call it tasks and it has to be prepended by slash. And when this tasks endpoint is accessed, what we will do is go call dot respond and we will call task service dot get all tasks. And this respond looks like this is an error. It has to be a smaller case R. So this is defining a get endpoint, which will respond with all of the tasks. So what this will do is send it back in a format that we cannot simply open from our browser. So we will actually use this app called Postman to send a test request to this particular server. And we will just rerun this and then we will open Postman and we will copy server URL over there and we will do slash tasks and click send. 
and it looks like it is not acceptable something went wrong so we will see with these error logs what went wrong here and the reason why this doesn't work is because within Kator we essentially need to define what kind of data we're able to receive and send back and that is what we do using this file over here serialization.kt which we didn't yet touch on what it is doing here is installing this content negotiation plugin and what we want to do is define this content negotiation to allow us to deal with JSON data so we will call JSON and inside of parentheses we'll call JSON again this time with a capital J then we will do curly braces enter and we will call pretty print and set that to true and we will also call is lenient and set that also to true again here we need to import some things so we will import json over there and import this json over there i will just need to remember to close those brackets and we will not close it yet over there now because what is happening here in routing with this respond when it is not respond text but respond it wants to send this data back as json but now we essentially explicitly allowed that to happen now when we go back to postman after we first rerun our server and just to highlight there's actually an easier way to do this without needing to restart the application using the development mode inside of intellij to turn that on what you need to do is copy this code from here development colon true and then inside of your code editor you're going to find from src main resources application.yaml and over here, you're going to add this line over here, development.true. What that simply means is that whenever you want to change something inside of your application, you don't actually need to restart it. So that's just something to know that might make it easier while you're developing. And we send this get request, we get some data back. And obviously for now, this is an empty list because we haven't yet defined any tasks. So that is what we will do next. So instead of routing, you will now define an endpoint with the type post to allow us to receive post requests that are essentially requests where we want to put some data into our server. And inside of here, we will call tasks slash add, for example. And then inside of this endpoint, we will define a value task, which will be equal to call, which is essentially again the request dot receive. So we're getting some data inside of this request and we'll just define this to be of type task. And again, we need to import this task class just like that. And then what we will do is again, inside of our task service, we will create yet another function where we will define the logic that will be called when that post endpoint is triggered. And we'll call this function create task, which will take in a task of type task and the function itself will also be of type task meaning it will return a task so we'll return the new task that was created In, and instead of here what we will simply do is create is called tasks dot add which is the kotlin function to add or push a member to a list and we'll call it with this task that we received into this function and then finally we will return this task back to the caller and now we will just copy this right there go back to routing.kt and after we receive this task we'll then go ahead and again use call which is generally what we use to access anything about the request itself and we'll call dot respond and we will call task service dot create task with this task so what this will do is go ahead and call the create task function in the task service which, which will call this function add that task to this tasks list over here which is a mutable list meaning that we can actually add values to it and then we'll return back that task in case we want to then return it back to the caller so now let's see what will happen so essentially what we will need to do is instead of postman instead of get we will call post and then set it to tasks dot add and we will need to give this a body so when you're coding up the front end be it a web application or a mobile application or whatever essentially inside of that front end logic you would define it so that for example there's a form that then sends the data of that form and the format in which it is going to come in is going to be something like this this should be of type json which we're defining in here in postman and then looking at our task model we need to define basically all of these values in here so we'll need to give this an id and we'll just put that as one i guess that has to be a string so that's one right there we'll give it a title this is going to be for example by groceries description which is actually optional so we'll just make sure that it works even if we don't give it and we'll just give it completed which is going to be false so now if we send that request like that 
we see not found see what went wrong i believe that is because we actually need to rerun this server right that's now server is running again we will call again tasks add and looks like it goes through we get back the tasks that we created it should have now added it to the list so we can actually see if that worked by going get and tasks and we put that to none once we send would you look at that we get back the tasks that is now stored over there and now if we go back again and we add let's say another task like buy milk for example, we send that as a post request to the server. And of course, that is the wrong method. So we'll call that to tasks add. Now it's sent. And again, we go back to get tasks. Now we get back both of the tasks that we've added. So you might see how you can now use this, expand this to build a proper backend for a to-do application. What I would challenge you to do now is create endpoints for deleting tasks, completing tasks. And off the that, you can start adding things like a database where these tasks are actually stored persistently. So this was just a video to get you started with Ktor. As you can see, a very, very easy framework to use, an excellent way to learn backend development. And it's really beneficial because you can build this back in and use it for whatever type of clients you want. Again, thank you for JetBrains for sponsoring this video. If you want to see another tutorial where we build a fully fledged web application from scratch, a bit, of, a bit more of an advanced tutorial, then I recommend you watch this video right here. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.